Well, on what was an historic day for Cadell Evans and Australian Cycling, who better to wrap up this am amazing day than the voice of cycling, Mr Phil Liggett. Phil, you've known Cadell a long time. Since that, that tour of Wellington, or the tour yeah. of Tasmania yeah. stage of, tour of uh, up to, to Mount Wellington, I should be saying, but um, what an incredible day. It was back in 1998, I think it was, and um, in Hobart, we were, I was with uh, Phil Anderson, and we watched Cadell Evans uh, climb Mount Wellington and, and wipe out the pros of the day, which included uh, Neil Stevens then. And we said, uh, I said to Phil, I said, you know, this kid can win the Tour de France. Phil says, yeah, mate, I think you're right. So we went and had a word with Cadell. We said, Cadell, you've got to turn to road cycling. And you know what Cadell is like? Well, he says, I'm a great mountain biker and I want to ride uh, in the Olympic Games in the mountain bike in Sydney. And then I might think about it. Well, of course, as always happens when you save yourself for one big event, he broke his collarbone, he didn't have a great mountain bike race in Sydney in 2000, and then he did turn to the road after that. He won the Tour of Austria. Well, the rest is history now. Uh, he's won the Tour de France, and it's, it's a very emotional time, even for me. Well, coming into the stage, I guess we all did think that he could ride faster in the time trial than both Frank and Andy Schleck, but did you ever think that he could go so fast? Look, when we were asked to predict the winner of the Tour, uh, weeks before the Tour, I said Cadell Evans would win the Tour. I felt this was his best chance and uh, Contador, of course, was odds-on favourite to be the winner. You got nothing at the bookies for him. And Schleck was saying how much he wanted <coughs> Contador in the race so he could beat him and be the winner. But I just felt this year's just gone perfectly for Cadell. From the minute he won Torano Adriatico and the Romandy and then he finished second for the fourth time in the Dauphiné. Every stage he took, it worked. And he started the day one the Tour. He was second in the tour. He was never at the top three until just before the Emily fell to fourth. And then we saw the result he fought back. But I was scared to predict him to win the time trial, uh, to get his time back in the time trial. I was just frightened that it wouldn't happen. And if commentator's curse came into play, you know, we knew he had the ability to wipe out the Schlecks. But would it be today? Would it be now? And he's pulled on the Mayo jaw and it makes you ride like two men. <clears throat> and so it goes. Well, he, he really he rode more like half a man today, I guess. I don't want to disrespect Andy mm -hmm. Schleck at all, but I guess it was just so much effort and energy during those last few mountain stages that perhaps cost him. On the face of it, yes, but he's carrying the pressure of, uh, of the whole of Luxembourg. And they were all here, I think. Uh, and the French also love him. Uh, in fairness, they really supported Andy more than Cadell. Uh, Cadell to the French is still a little bit of a mystery man. They don't really understand him, but they love Andy Schleck. There's no doubt about that. The pressure was on him. And I think, yes, he must have been tired from those attacks because he knew he had to get time off Cadell because he knew what Cadell could do in the time trial, although he never once said it. Um, and he went in with 57 seconds, and it should have been enough, but on the day we were all doubting it. But it was enough in the end by a long way. Well, the thing that I've noticed about Cadell over the last couple of years and is the real difference in his own mindset, I guess, these last two years now that he's been with BMC, and especially since he won the World yeah. Road Championships. Have you noticed that sort of change? 100%. Uh, this year, Cadell has been a different bike rider. No disrespect to Cadell, but he wanted to talk to the press now, and he was much more friendly in his approach uh, instead of just sort of slapping things down and walking away and not saying any words which is the quickest way to annoy journalists, I suppose. Uh, but you could see this guy had approached the whole tour with a totally different uh, mindset. And, you know, at the end, and he was talking on Eurovision there about his, his great friend and mentor and coach, Aldo Sassi, who died about 18 months ago, I suppose now. He saw Cadell win the World Championship in Mendricio, and he said then, Cadell, you can win a Grand Tour, and you can win the Tour de France. Well, he's about to do that, and I guess you can say it much better than I can. I'd like you to just sum up what's going to happen now. We still have one stage to go into Paris, but we know it's more of a procession and a celebration before the, the sprinters do take over on those last few laps of the Champs-Élysées. Well, George Hincap is the best man to tell Cadell how to enjoy the last day. He's done it eight times already, seven times with Lance Armstrong, once with Albert, Alberto Contador. Tomorrow he does it with Cadell Evans, and George himself completes his 16th record-equaling Tour de France. And uh, he'll tell Cadell how to enjoy himself. Uh, but at the end of the day, they'll keep him. The team will surround him. Any little crashes tomorrow, Cadell will be in the centre of the BMC squad and they won't let him fall off. That's all he's got to do now to win the Tour de France. Thank you, Phil. I'm sure everyone back home in Australia is going to be listening to your the sultry sounds of Phil Liggett again, but this time it's going to be extra special with the winner of the Tour de France in it Cadell is. Evans. It is. I've had great pleasure of calling uh, English-speaking winners. I was, uh, when we called uh, Greg LeMond winning the Tour de France, I had a great pleasure in calling Stephen Roach, the Irishman, to win the Tour de France. I called the King of the Mountains in Robert Miller, the Scot. It's the first time I called an Australian.